Hey everyone. So today we're going to be talking with my buddy Steve. Actually, it's a bit of a different one today. Um, it should be an interesting conversation. Me and Steve have known each other for a few years now. I think we met back in 2016 in Thailand, Steve. Mm. Um, we were actually part of the same course together when we first both got into online business. Uh, and the cool thing is that with Steve, we have a similar kind of the same business model essentially, but he uses different strategies to get his clients. So it should be an interesting conversation in that respect. And I guess just to jump right into it, Steve, maybe tell us a little bit more about the beginning stages of your business before you started and how that all went about. Yeah, I mean, like you said, so we're part of the same course that we joined back in 2015, I think it was. So if I go a bit further back before that, so I just come out of university and uh, I was like unsure of what I wanted to do. And I thought I just want something that gives me freedom to be able to travel and, um, you know, just like earn money whilst being able to travel the world. And so I, I looked into different things online. I tried some like affiliate affiliate stuff. I created a website called Top Rated Diet Pill, which I don't think you know about, which no. is uh, <laughs> which was quite funny. That that was a complete failure. So I tried a few things and they completely flopped. And then I ended up going to London and just like joining the rat race. And I was working in London and um, in like this this sales role. And then. I got wind of this online course that teaches you how to create a business that you can like use to fund a life of, uh, of freedom and, and stuff. So I started to check that out and I was like, oh, like this seems too good to be true. Like I didn't, yeah, I didn't know what to do, whether to join it or not. I ended up joining it, which it was quite a lot of money, as you know. And um, it was cool. Like the course was, the course was all right. It was okay. <laughs> um, it wasn't like, I, I wouldn't say it was anywhere near as, as complete as, as your course, but it was like a, a good sort of, basis and then yeah so that was in 2015 and then from that like yeah just started following this course working on that and then 2016 went to Thailand and then obviously met you in Thailand but that, that for me that was when things changed because the whole time I was working on it I was working alone I was like I didn't tell any of my friends that I'd built like I was trying to build this business because I was like oh like what if it fails like I don't want to be that guy who tries things and fa which is really shit like you need to yeah. fail but I don't know why it was my ego and then when I went to Thailand and met you, you and Cam, I was like, oh shit, it is real. Cause like you boys were traveling around. You had your businesses up and running. You were like living the dream or like living my dream at least. Yeah. So when I met you guys, I was like, shit, this is real now. I need to work hard at this. I need to focus. Cause I, I was always like dipping my toe in and, and like not fully committing. I had that resistance where I was like, oh, it might fail. So I don't want to commit too much. And then when I met you completely changed. And the cool thing is, and like the funny thing is like, like I said, the course was all right. It was fairly good. But then the most value I got from the course was meeting you because then <laughs> I met you and and it was like, oh shit, Dylan's doing all these things that aren't in the course. I'm just going to do what Dylan's doing. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight. Like it was a lot of work and stuff. It was, uh, I was working long hours in this role in London. In my free time, I was trying to grow this business. And then after a few years, finally got it to like take off to the point where I thought, right, I can probably leave my job now. It's still a massive gamble, but like it's now or never. And then obviously ended up leaving my job and then moving to Poland to live with you so <laughs> that was like the big leap I guess that was the turning point really like when I moved to Poland it was like like I say it was now or never that's when just things quadrupled for me like my business took off and it was just like ultimately being in that same environment with someone who is doing it as well like you and me had some wicked times when we like masterminding together yeah um it was really cool so I can talk loads more about that um for sure which I'm, I'm definitely keen to but just to quickly finish the story so since then so that was in 2018 so since then i've basically just been traveling the world like whilst growing my business so after poland i moved to colombia i uh, spent a few months there and then i went to croatia for a couple of months and i moved to spain for a few months and then i ended up going back to colombia which was about this time last year and then obviously covid happened so that kind of threw my travel plans off so since then i've been in the uk but um but now it's been really cool man because like like all my friends who had been traveling they'd gone traveling and then they'd come back and like it was like a gap for them it was like right i'm gonna travel for a year and then live my life like live the normal life i was like i don't want to do i don't just like put my life on pause so the past few years that i've been traveling my business has just grown and grown and grown so it's it's been amazing to like have those experiences whilst also developing my career and myself as a business owner so yeah that's kind of like the story summed up the past few years summed up in uh, three minutes yeah it's really interesting as well i mean because you obviously are really really committed to making it happen too i mean when you first joined that course maybe talk a little bit more about the process from, you know, joining this course and spending all this money on this course and then getting to that 
first sale? What was that whole process like for you? Yeah, man. So joining the course itself was like a huge decision for me. And like, it sounds silly, but because I'd already had all these failures before where like this, this affiliate marketing, I tried like SEO stuff because I already had those failures before. I was like so emotionally tormented by it. I was like, I can't take another failure but I really want this to succeed. This course it launched, it wasn't like evergreen. I think it went online for like three days or something. Yeah, I think it was, was it even one day? Like 24 hours? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was actually. 24 hours. Like a few hours, yeah. Yeah. So I remember I was at work and I was in a meeting and I got an email saying it's gone live. And I was like, oh no, I need to get it. Cause like this, in my head, it was like, it's this opportunity or never, or like at least another year. So I was like, right, I'm going to quickly go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and got my phone out and I got my credit card out. And I bought this course on my phone. For me, it was like such a big decision. It was such like this, this like emotional thing to like purchase this course. Cause for me, it was like, right, this is, is it's the most money I've ever spent probably on anything. I was like, so now I've, I've committed. I'm like, I've got to do it. I've got to follow through. So after that, it was like, it was super exciting to get into this course and like start building a business, but it certainly wasn't easy or quick, like at least for me, I know for you, it was a lot quicker. But um, like I said, because I'd had all these failures, I was like being a bit careful, a bit cautious. I wasn't throwing myself all in mm. because I was like, I don't want to commit loads of time to something that might not work, which now my mindset has completely changed. It's like you've got to go after the things you want. And because I've learned now that like if you commit, you're more likely to get it than if you don't. But at the time I was just like, I don't know, I was in a weird headspace. And um, I followed the course. It was like, right, choose a business idea, build a website, find your team, the usual kind of stuff, go out and try and get clients. So I joined in like September and I think it was, I think it was like May or June. I think it was about May time that I got my first, first sale. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like it was just ridiculous. Like I'd just gone out and emailed a bunch of businesses just like, hey, I found you. I've just created this company. Do you want to, uh, like, can we speak? I think we, I can't remember what I said, but like, mm. yeah, I think we can We can help. I remember like the first few emails I sent, the next day I was at work and my phone started, my phone started ringing. It was a London number. And I was like, I think that might be one of the, the leads that I emailed. <laughs> and I let it go to voicemail and um, I listened to voicemail and it was, it was this dude. He was like, hey, I got your email, really keen to chat. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is real. Like people are actually interested. And that first sales call, I did it from, um, from Canary Wharf, uh, like DLR station. So if anyone's from London, they'll know where that is. Um, I did it from there and I was like really nervous. I was like shaking, like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it was just so funny. Like it was just such a buzz and like that, I didn't close that sale, but that was proof of concept for me. It was like, okay, this is work, like this can work. So I just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept sending emails. And eventually yeah, I got a, got a company to say, yeah, we want to, we want to pay you. I think it was like 200 pounds or something it was ridiculously cheap hmm. uh, i didn't make any profit on it and um yeah like the first he said right send me an invoice so i was like okay sure i hung up and then the first thing i did was call my dad and say dad what's an invoice and how do i send one <laughs> <laughs> i was like such a noob yeah it was fun like it was an exciting journey to get to that first sale but it certainly wasn't like as clear-cut as like you might think when people like people probably look at me and look at you in the group now and they're like oh like they've got it really easy but actually they they haven't seen those first few months and years where it's like doing the graft you know doing that work i think that like initial process as well is pretty crazy you know we were when we first got that course i think it was like five thousand dollars or six thousand yeah. dollars six thousand um, i think yeah yeah that's a crazy amount and we we jumped into it and obviously my process was a little bit faster but it still took me three months to get my first sale mm. That period, you know, those three months were terrifying because, you know, you don't know if it's possible. You see mm. other people getting sales and you're like, oh, well, they're, they're doing it, but can I do it as well? And that thought is terrifying in and of itself. And I think that that period is the most dangerous period in anyone's journey with mm -hmm. online business because they're most likely to give up during that period. So if they have people around them that are, you know, being negative about building an online business and saying, oh, it's taking you so long, it's probably not going to work, they're much more likely to give up easily if they hear feedback like that. So I think it's mm. so important. It was really important for us as well to have that community we had as well. Like the community was probably a really great part of that course, even though it was really expensive. Um, yeah. And that helped us push forward, I think, even more because that's, a, that's the most dangerous part. Once you get that first sale, then you know it's real 
and you go all in, as you were saying, and you, and you actually yeah. start putting in a lot more effort because you know if you can get one sale, you can get more sales. And I think it was the same for me as well, Steve. When I when I got my first call or my first reply to an offer, I was like, "Whoa, people people yeah. are, in, are interested." I can't believe this. And that was where where I thought, okay, maybe maybe this is real. Um, and then from there, got to that first sale. But yeah, that, that's a really interesting point. And then once you got that first sale and you knew it was real, what do you think? changed for you in terms of maybe you know your mindset or action as well the mindset shift was enormous because it was like oh my god someone's just paid me money across the internet i think i sent them an invoice on paypal and they sent me money and i was like shit this is real like this is actually a real thing because like up until then i saw people getting sales in the group I was a really negative person back then. I was like, oh, like they're probably hired by the guy who created the course. Like they're not actually <laughs> real. I was like this Dylan guy, like he's fake. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to believe it, but there was something in me. I was like, yeah, they can do it, but I can't. Like I'm different. I'm not a business owner. They're business owners. They can do what they do, but like I'm different. And then went to event, but like, I don't know. In my head, I was like, just keep going. Just follow the process. See if it works. If it doesn't hopefully I'll learn from it. And if I, if it does, then great. Um, and like I said, it, it works. Like the f- I got that first sale. And then as soon as that happened, it was just like, Oh shit, this is real. Like this actually does have like people will pay me money on the internet. And it doesn't mean it just suddenly changed overnight for me. Like um, I would still, you know, like fall into bad habits where like uh, if I didn't get a response to like some cold emails that I sent, I'd be like, Oh, like it's over. Like this has failed this doesn't work anymore. And like I said, like it was then, so I think it was maybe four or five or maybe six months before making my first sale, first sale to then meeting you in Thailand. That was like, a, like an, a roller coaster. And then when I met you in Thailand, I was like, shit, that's when it all changed. I was like, this is really real now. Like I've made a sale. I think I've made a couple at that point. I've made a few sales. And then I actually made one in Thailand before meeting you, which was funny. Um, so that was a cool holiday. Then I met you and I was like, he, like Dylan's doing this, Dylan's traveling. I've made sales. This clearly is working. So my mindset changed. And then because of that, I was just, I allowed myself to go all in because I was like, it, it will work if I just dive in and, and like commit to it. Like it can work. Whereas before it was like, yeah, if I commit to it and it doesn't work, oh, I, I like, I, I would have lost so much time and effort and energy. Whereas like, yeah, once I saw that it was real, I had no excuse not to. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember the guy, but like, there's this whole thing. I think Tony Robbins. It was. I think he said it. Where it's like, no one could run a four minute mile. And like, no one could do it. And then one person ran a four minute mile. And then that year, something like ten people ran a four minute mile. And it's exactly the same thing that what happened with me. It was like, I can't do this. And then I saw someone do it. I was like, oh, it can be done. <laughs> um, so yeah, man. Like mindset change, and then because of that, all of my actions, like and habits, changed. It became, it became something that was like, instead of running away from fear, which I think was what I was doing, because I was like, I was almost trying to find reasons why it wouldn't work for me. Like, oh, these people are different. It won't work for me because whatever, like, I'm, I'm in London, I don't know, making up like excuses. And then it changed to finding reasons why it can work. It's like, well, if Dylan can do it, I can do it. If I can make 200 pounds in a sale, I can make 500 pounds. And then that became a thousand. And then 3,000 and 5,000 and like 10,000, 10,000 dollar sales that we're doing now. It's like everything just leads on to the next. I'm still like, I don't think it's maybe anything you ever escape. Like I'm now like, now I'm like, right, how do I make a $20,000 sale, or like a $50,000 sale? So it's, I don't think it's something you ever outrun, but I think the most important thing is just getting that first win and celebrating small wins, like finishing a website. That's a big win. When have you ever had a website before? Never. All right. Well, that's a win. So like, celebrating these small wins and that's what I started doing was was recognizing like all these little accomplishments and um and like rewarding myself for them and it just spurred me on so yeah I think that was the big thing yeah 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 it's so crucial man like there is there is definitely an, a, a mindset and an action change once you do get that first sale I and mean, then there's a lot of little ones after that as well you know like you're mentioning getting to that point where you're getting those bigger sales but then also things like automated sales like i remember the first yeah. time i got an automated sale where you know i think i was just sitting in bed or something and i look at my phone like whoa where'd that sale come from? i never did a sales call or anything yeah. and then like when we're in thailand we're getting sales there or like and when i was in uh budapest 
like in in a bar or a club and like seeing a sale pop on your phone that's that's pretty crazy feeling as well but before you get to that point you don't even believe that you can do it and i remember as well one thing that's quite interesting is um in that course, most of the people in that community, I think, were doing a lot of it themselves. So there wasn't much automation going on with it. And like everyone was doing the sales calls, right? No one would automate the sales calls back then. So once I automated the sales calls and I added that into my course and I saw other people were doing it, I noticed that it became so much easier for the students to automate the sales calls as well. Yeah. So everything just happens faster when, when we actually see that other people say it can be done. And they're doing it, then we're like, okay, that person's doing it, then I can do it. And that's when we actually do things. Often, if other people aren't doing something, we're not willing to just try it out and come up with it, right? We don't believe it's possible until we see other people doing it. And that's something that's really, really interesting. And I think that that's a big part of, you know, having that community there as well. You know, like when you when you came to live with me in Poland, when we were in Krakow together, and I remember us sitting in Starbucks and doing a little mastermind sessions there, like you like you were doing pretty well at that point, right? Like I think 5K a month or more or something like that. Yeah, about that, five, six, yeah. Yeah, and then you started really, really crushing it as well. And you, the interesting thing about you is you have strategies that I don't really see other people using at all. Like Mm -hmm. they're not strategies that I use and also the people in that community weren't really using this kind of strategy that you came up with. That's something that I think is really powerful too. You know, like first you learn the basics, you learn the 80% of things, but then you come up with with your own little, you know, 2% or 3% strategies, they actually have a major impact in your business. Because I know now you, you did like $290,000 in one of your businesses last year. Yeah. So 2020 did 290 grand. um, And the really cool thing is I didn't do any marketing after like February or March, I think February or March, I stopped doing any marketing because I ended up like starting another business uh, in the fitness industry, which took all of my time. And um, it was so cool because it was like this year of COVID where at the start I was like, I was like, shit, what's going to happen? Like, is my business going to crumble? Um, and then I ended up, so COVID happened and then I just stopped working on, on, uh, on like on the business. I stopped doing any marketing and I had a record year. Um, and it's still just growing and like so yeah you're absolutely right like the thing the things that I've implemented in my business have been systems that like pay off it's not just like right send a cold email and then make a sale it's like there are strategies that I've done that create recurring sales and create just automated sales and like make other people sell for me and stuff like that so yeah it was a good year last year and uh, like I said it was just really cool to to see that growth without actually working in my business or even even on it really the biggest thing i did last year was was mainly like focus on on automation um i was like right we've got clients coming in we've got money we've got a lot of revenue which is awesome how do i remove myself even more from it which is quite funny because you were talking about like automating sales and stuff yeah i ended up hiring hiring a sales guy last year um who did really well who was crushing it he was making sales and that was like Oh my God, like this is because it's funny because like when I was living with you, I was doing all, I was doing everything. I was doing the marketing, the project management, the sales, everything. And you were like, dude, you need to get a project manager. And um, no, I think even first you were like, you need to automate your like your LinkedIn outreach and stuff. And I was like, oh, but that's money. I was like, oh, and I was like in this, like, because I was so new to this whole business thing. I was like, oh, that's money. Like that's an expense. And then I'd listen to you. And I was like, oh my God, this has freed up so much time. And that time was really valuable, but it also allowed me to make more money. And then, so that was the first thing. Then it was, you were saying, you need to hire a project manager. I hired a project manager, which took a couple of months to find the right one, um, then got her up to speed. And yeah, like that was huge as well. It was like, shit, I've just got rid of all of my like day-to-day projects. And then I started to feel guilty. I was like, I don't know what to work on. Like, <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> I remember chatting to you just like, Dylan, I don't know what to do. And you were like, just keep working on automation. Just keep like, just keep automating. And then, yeah, so last year I hired a sales guy. He was killing it. And then in November last year, I ended up hiring one of my best mates to join me. And we've kind of partnered up. So he's kind of become like a part owner of my business now. And it's been amazing because like what I realized is that there are two kind of things. Like you can automate your business and it will 
it will just run and make sales or you can automate your business and come back in a year and it's grown. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to just run. I wanted it to grow. So I had a long chat with well, I've several chats with with one of my mates who's uh, who's been involved in different marketing agencies. And I was like, shit, if I partnered with him, I could remove myself and it would just like the business would develop as well. So I hired him and um, yeah, that's been amazing. So there's like a whole new level of automation, which is like not only your sales outsourced, not only are like your projects outsourced, but now it's like your whole product development is outsourced. Like, uh, so he's called Kyle. Kyle has come in and just been like, oh, like I see that we need to, we need to change this. Like this is, this is like an idea I have that's going to help differentiate us in the marketplace and stuff. And I'm like, wow, these are things that I would have had to think of consciously. And like, it's hard to find that. So um, now I've hired him. It's like, shit, there's a whole new level of automation, which is awesome. Can't remember why I was talking about that, but yeah. <laughs> automation, automation. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's, that's really interesting as well. Like getting to that point where your team is, is also coming up with ideas, coming up with solutions yeah. and coming up with ways to build your business, not just implementing the systems that you've you've created for them and then that's where your business becomes almost like an asset it just yeah creates value for you without you having to work in it essentially or on it um, because you're basically completely focused on this new thing now so yes that's really cool and i think that one thing that we've spoken about a lot in the past is competition mm. and how you know when we started out like what was it five years ago now with animated video <laughs> such like a a saturated market people would say like everyone's doing animated video businesses we were like yeah. oh man how are we going to get enough sales to earn as much as we want etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and we were even you know you were you asked me about this back in like 2018 even and i was like back then i was like saying to you you know everyone's always worried about competition mm. but the thing about competition is most people aren't willing to do enough work to actually create the business and get it to the level that you're willing to get it to. So your competition isn't, you know, everyone else having an animated video business. Your competition is the people that are willing to do all of the things that you're doing mm -hmm. and know how to do all of the things that you're doing. Those are your only competition. And those people are few and far between. That's something to consider as well. Is like when you're starting your business, all of these little mindset shifts are really important. But there's all these limiting beliefs that we have as well when we're starting a business like that competition one where, you know, of course, there's a lot of people doing the same business as, as us, especially in the beginning. But because we did things in, in certain ways, you know, focusing on specific niches, focusing on specific mm. marketing channels, uh, and you, you know, with, with your own methods, I don't really even fully know, you know, what your strategies are completely. Yeah. You know, th those are the things that allow you to win. And those are the things that you come up with while you're actually implementing the general thing. So first you learn all of the basics of building a business and getting your first results, you know, getting to $10,000 a month. And then as you're doing that, that's when you, you start to find the little things, the, the best niche to go after, finding clients that buy multiple services from you, finding your best marketing channel, finding the best offer, finding different strategies for getting new clients, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all these little things that kind of build up over time. And you just need to be willing to be one of the people that is going to fully commit to implementing that process until you get to that point. I mean, you and I, for example, like I, I focused on going hard at this for three months until I got my first sale. You mm. were, well, I think like nine months or something like that. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah, we're not really good at counting months or anything. <laughs> and the funny thing is like you and I are not the smartest guys around. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, definitely not you. Definitely not you. No. Yeah, definitely not you. And <laughs> the interesting thing about it is like what we've been able to do with a very simple business model, with very typical strategies. We never, we didn't do any crazy stuff. We literally, we literally started with the basics and then we found things that worked and then we just kept doing those things and refined mm. them over time. And it's a very simple process, but the thing is you just need to be willing to fully commit to that process and actually take action on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the hard thing. That's the thing most people aren't willing to do. They're not willing to commit to, you know, one hour, two hour, half an hour a day, yeah. working on your business, focusing on it and improving over time and celebrating those small wins. It's so key. Like most people will get some leads or they'll even get some sales calls and they'll focus on the fact that they didn't close the sales call. And I'll be really yeah. gutted about that, which is fine. But also focus on the positive. You got a sales call. Someone was interested enough 
to set up a call with you to talk about your service. If you can yeah. get sales calls, you're literally at the at the door to getting that first sale. So and yeah. that's something that's really critical too. What I'll say to that as well is like, uh, so when I was doing the mastermind in your course, like when yeah. I had some private students and I was coaching them, a couple of books I always recommended. So one was Atomic Habits by James Clear and another was called The Slight Edge. I can't remember who it's by, but The Slight Edge. And there's also a third one as well, actually called um, The Compound Effect. And they're all kind of similar. I'd recommend reading all three, but it goes back to what you're saying just about like just doing the daily tasks where like small daily habits have such a big payoff in the long run and like they compound on each other so if you get one percent better every day you're like thousands percent better at the end of the year i don't know the exact figure because i'm not a mathematician but uh, <laughs> but it, it's big it's big yeah, yeah. Um, it's a big amount yeah and that's that's one thing that like i learned along the way which was just like just just there is a double-edged sword like you can look at other people and go oh they're doing so well why aren't I getting results like they are but a you don't know like they who knows like they maybe they had a, a lot of money that they could just dump into Facebook ads or whatever you don't know their situation but like you can use that as it can be scary because it, you think oh what am I doing wrong but you can also use that as motivation as long as you can be sort of patient with yourself and just get like do those daily things do the things you know that you should be doing and like trying to get one percent better every day it just it does compound over time so i'd really recommend checking out those three books but what i was going to say to that and i think that was really interesting is those things do compound but you said something interesting there about how people focus on what other people are doing, what other people are getting. Of course, you know, there's always a certain component of luck or something like that, something, you know, you can't really have any effect on. But overall, what it usually is, everyone beyond luck is everyone is in a different situation. Everyone yeah. starts with different resources. Some people have more time. Some people yeah. have more money. Some people are just naturally really good at focusing and getting a lot of things done. Some people aren't, um, which... By, by the way, it comes down to habits a lot of, a lot of the time. Mm. But, you know, what you choose to do on a day-to-day -day basis is what's important. What you do with your own resources is what's important. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. You can, you can look at what they're doing. You can take inspiration from it. But don't expect that, you know, you're going to magically be able to do what they do right away. Because oftentimes people do have some natural skills, um, but we all have the same process. And I think you and I are good examples of this but because we're not super smart guys, but you know, just by implementing that process, you can get results if you're able to deploy your resources in the right way. So for example, you know, maybe I don't have much money to start with, but you know, I can just focus on using more of my time. You know, maybe I'll, I'll work a few hours a day, two hours, three hours, whatever it may be, but I'll work mm. every single day, two to three hours. And I'll use strategies that allow me not to spend so much money. Like I won't, I won't build a website yep. to start with. You don't need a website to get sales. I'll use free methods like, you know, social media outreach or a cold email or whatever it may be, mm. even, you know, door to door if I need to, but I'm going to get those first sales. And then when I get those first sales, I'm going to reinvest it back into my business and grow it from there because you just need to, all you need to do is audit your life. Just audit your life, audit what you're doing with your hours, audit what habits you've got, what bad habits you've got, what good habits you've got, audit what you're spending your money on, audit at what times of the day you feel most energetic yeah. so you know when to work. All those things are so important and actually tracking those things and having a structure and a plan to your day that enables you to implement things in the best way and, and use your resources in the best way is so crucial. And I think that's one of the main things people don't do is they they just don't organize themselves. They don't, they don't look at what they have. They focus on what they don't have and then they use what they don't have as an excuse for not taking action. When in reality, yeah. they should be looking at what they do have and then take action with what they have, create a plan around that. So yeah, that's really, really crucial for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Like for me, habits are huge. Like as soon as I lose routine, like it's so funny. Like when I was working in a real job, I was like, I just want freedom. I don't want a routine and stuff. And then I got it. And what I realized is actually I started to fall in love with like business itself. And I was like, oh, it, it's so fun to come up with a new thing and, and test it and see if it works. And now for me, it's like, I really like my routine because I know that like, if I work for whatever, like four hours today, the rest of the day, I can, I can relax and it's guilt free and stuff. And having these daily habits and like routines make it so much easier to do that. So like, if you're, if you're in the stage where you're currently working in a job and this is a, 
like a side hustle for you and you're just trying to grow it in your free time. And I'd say like set aside times of the week where it's like, right, that is my dedicated time to focus on business and try and make it more frequent rather than doing like, right, on a Sunday, I'm going to spend 12 hours and then not do it for the rest of the week. Because I think momentum is so powerful that if you do 30 minutes or an hour a day, that's better than doing like seven hours on a Sunday and then nothing else because it just builds up and up. And yeah, the thing I wrote down, which is what I wanted to talk about earlier, which was every time I speak to you, every time like we hop on a call, I always come away like, oh man, yeah, it's so fun to build businesses and like to grow things. And like you've you've talked about like gamifying it. So like making it a game, like, oh, what 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 level can I reach next? What's the like obstacle I have to overcome now? Like then what's the next obstacle? And if you can try and gamify it for yourself where you're like, right, I'm on level one. How do I get to level two? And like, what's the reward for getting to level two? It just makes it so much more fun and it makes it so much more rewarding as well. So like, I love that concept of just gamifying it and, and turn, turning it into a game. Um, Cause in reality it is a game. It's like, it's like, all right, I'm building a business. That's uh, this is going to be fun. Like, what am I going to learn here? And the cool thing is as well, like as well is that you don't, you're not just building a business. And this is something I realized is like, People who win the lottery, for example, probably, like, I, th- I think there's a stat that they end up broke, but mm-hmm. they probably don't end up as much, at, like any, like they don't end up more happy. They haven't built the skills to make money. So if they lose it, they're screwed. They have to win another lottery. Whereas like when you're building a business, you're building yourself as a, like you're building your character. So like if your business crumbles at any point, you you know you can start another one like you you've got the skill set to do it and so like you're not just building a business you're building yourself and that's the way I've I've I kind of look at it and I've started to look at it which is like I'm becoming a better person through this I'm becoming a better person through building a business because like there are struggles like there are obstacles that you have to overcome and when people look at probably like you and me in the group who are just starting out they probably see this finished product that they're like, oh, they, they're so lucky they've got this business. But people don't know that like last year in June, I was genuinely talking about shutting down my video business because there was like, we were too busy. And I was like, oh, I can't be bothered with all these problems that are kicking off. I was working on this fitness product. I was like, maybe I should just focus on that and just get rid of this business. And then luckily I st- stuck at it. I was like, no, if I can fix these, it's stressful at the time, all these fires that are taking place, like all these obstacles, if I can fix them, I will have reached that next level of like, well, what's the next challenge? And like, I know I can overcome it. But try and gamify it and trying to try to look a bit deeper is like, you're, who are you becoming as a person by building a business? Yeah, I think that's so crucial as well. People often look at it as getting to the end. Like, oh, I just want to get to the end. I just want to have this yeah. thing that's going to make money, which is awesome. And yeah, of course you want to have that thing yeah. that's going to make money. But that process of getting there that allows you to build character personally, but also, you know, the skills of being able to do it again, just in case it ever, if it goes under or maybe it stops working, whatever it may be, not being afraid of that because you know that you actually have the skills to replicate mm. it over and over again. And it's not just this thing where you're, you're building this thing that's going to be there. I mean, it's this thing where you're building yourself and your own skills, your own ability and who you are as a person that enables you to replicate that process with other businesses down the line. I mean, just having this one business isn't going to make you happy as well. You're going to want more. Mm. And, you know, once you get to that next level, you're going to want to get to the next level and the next level and the next level as we've both yeah. experienced. So, um, yeah, I think that's so crucial. And, and gamifying it in terms of, you know, celebrating your wins and rewarding yourself for those wins is really crucial too. Actually, you know, having that reward, don't just focus on the end goal, make little goals all the way leading up yeah. to that end goal so you can actually celebrate go out and have a beer when you finish your website or whatever it may be yeah it's so so crucial not turning it into this painful thing you know turning it into something that you actually enjoy doing um you know like playing a video game because at the end of the day you know it is a game everything is a game mm. i mean depending on how you want to look at life if you can make it more enjoyable you're going to get more done and you're going to enjoy it more as yeah well. yeah 100 percent. and and also like the great thing about joining a course like this like one of the most valuable things I've I've gotten from business isn't even like the business or the freedom or something it's the people I've met because it's led on to so many more opportunities and like just knowledge as well and like just seeing people live other lives that's like oh I didn't realize that was an option and it's so cool so like 
so, like joining a course like this is such a good idea. And what I'd say is really try to network with people in the group. Yeah, like people who are like further ahead of you, people who aren't as far along as you. So like help out people who are maybe a few months or a year or whatever behind because it's, yeah, you just never know. Like, for example, like Steve in the mastermind, he joined the mastermind for, for my help to help, his grow, uh, help him grow his business. His business is killing at the moment. But now like he's got this whole other life of like investing and stuff. And I watch his YouTube videos like, and it's getting me interested in like investing. And you just never know like people who are further along than you, people who aren't as far along, like everyone has something to teach you. I'd massively like take advantage of that while you're in this group with, with other like-minded people is like, yeah, just try and try and get out there, try and meet people like, like you and me, mate, we met in Thailand. And then since then, like that led me to moving to Poland and like living in Poland, having a wicked experience there with you. And yeah, it just leads on to so many more opportunities. So try to remember that aspect of business as well. It's not just about making money. It's like, it's think, yeah, think about everything else you're gaining just from building a business with other like-minded people. Yeah. Yeah. Engaging in the community is, is such a crucial part of it all. And I think mm. one of the most undervalued parts, people are often afraid. They, they think that they, they're, they're not good enough. They have no value, but everyone has some value to share. Yeah. Um, and even when people ask good questions, that even brings value. If you have questions, post them. Never, never think that, you know, you're asking a stupid question or anything like that. Because, you know, Steve and I can do it. I'm sure that you're much smarter than us. Definitely, you know, engage in the group and talk to the community. You'll, you'll create friends for life. And yeah, I think that's a really, really important part. So we can end the interview there, really, Steve. I think that was a really good thing. And uh, I think it's super inspirational to hear your story for everyone. Yeah, if anyone has questions about Steve's story, they can just post it in the, the group. Steve's in there. Uh, lurking yeah. around and uh yeah. now they can so awesome thanks so much for the, the interview steve yeah no worries at all i hope it's helpful well feel free to ping some questions below and i'll try and answer them and uh yeah if i can help let me know